Let's talk about something that I don't usually talk about on this channel. The hit era of Thomas. For those who need context, the hit era is the name fans have given the five seasons of Thomas that started in 2004. Seasons 8 through 12. And by extension, the first four CGI seasons animated by Nitrogen. It's called the hit era because the children's media company Hit Entertainment had purchased the Thomas brand the year before. Hit had a different vision for Thomas, a vision that would completely screw over how the general public perceives the franchise. What Hit did was essentially soft reboot the series for a much lower age demographic. In 2004, Thomas returned for its eighth season with a completely new format that included longer episodes, an all-new score with a different composer, a new writing style, and an all-new theme song that nobody liked. I still, to this day, do not understand why they changed the theme song. What was wrong with the original one? Literally everyone on the planet knows it. I'm very aware that a lot of my viewers grew up with this era of Thomas and are nostalgic for it. There's nothing wrong with that. Feel free to like whatever you like. But I'm a firm believer that nostalgic doesn't equal good. I'm nostalgic for the Star Wars prequels, but I don't pretend that they're great movies to try and justify me liking them. They're pretty f***ing cringy if I'm honest. Liar! Hit era Thomas is basically the same in my eyes. If someone outside the Thomas world went from season 7 to season 8, they're definitely going to notice that step down in quality. It's just too jarring to not notice. There was a very clear attempt to make Thomas appeal to a much younger audience. We're talking straight up toddlers here. Not all ages like it was before, but literally just toddlers. This resulted in a complete rework of the show's structure. Our huge cast of characters was dwindled down to a main cast of eight and a few of the recognizable side ones. Characters like Duck or Donald and Douglas and Terrence the Tractor all got the boot. Very kitty gimmicky locations would start becoming a norm as well, including places like an ice cream factory, or a bakery, or a puppet show theater, or a pirate's treasure cove, etc. Instead of the more realistic locations of grimy industry that were so present in the seasons prior. But the biggest thing that took a nosedive during this era was the writing. The episodes became intentionally dumber and drawn out. Characters became much more childlike, and the writing got lazier. The three strikes and you're out formula came into prominence in this era. This was, of course, a result of lazy writing, but I also think it's a result of the new longer runtime. Thomas episodes always stuck to a 4 minute 30 second format, and that short length was perfect. It was short and digestible so kids could watch full episodes before losing attention, and it also made the older episodes a lot more snappy. There was never time to waste so the pacing was always moving. There was no dawdling to pad out time. Hit changed the runtime to 7 minutes because they wanted to reformat Thomas to fit better in half hour blocks for PBS and Nick Jr. airings. Two 7 minute episodes, a 5 minute old episode in the middle, plus 3 minutes of learning segments, the engine roll call, and the credits, and you got 25 minutes of material, with 5 minutes left for ads. You would think that 7 minutes is a good thing. That means 2.5 more minutes of Thomas content. And in a perfect world, yeah, that would be great. And it can be done. See the Brenner era, where they used 9 minutes to tell entertaining stories. But it's not a good thing here, because so little happens in these hit era episodes. Less world building and plot occurs in a hit episode than in a classic one. It's basically taking less plot than before and just stretching it out. Take an episode like Thomas and the insert object name here where the majority of the runtime is just the three strikes formula. Thomas makes a mistake three times and on his third time realizes he messed up. Did that mistake have to happen three times for this story to work? No. It's a waste of time. That's why these episodes come off as so boring. Because nothing happens. I honestly think the majority of the hit episodes would be more enjoyable if they were cut down to a 4.30 runtime like the classics. Thomas Media Fan 2002 did an edit of Season 8's Fish to a 4.30 runtime, and I honestly didn't notice a difference between it and the original. That just goes to show how much time these episodes waste, and what little purpose the longer 7 minute runtime serves. However, 
There is one episode, one brilliant gem of an episode, that uses its seven minutes to its full advantage in crafting the best story it could. And that episode is Respect for Gordon. Respect for Gordon is, in my opinion, the best episode of the hit era. And here's why. So I'll start just by going through the episode in order. On the surface, this episode seems fairly generic and starts off like any other. Engines are doing their jobs, Thomas pulls Annie and Clarabelle, Gordon pulls the Express, yada yada yada, typical hit episode intro. The narrator tells us Gordon's firebox makes a clanking sound as it cools down at night. It's something Gordon is rather embarrassed about. And one night, Percy and Thomas decide to give Gordon shit for it. And then they continue in the next morning, and then it starts to become a thing. Every engine starts teasing Gordon and belittling him. Gordon reaches a boiling point and decides it's time for everyone to start respecting him. So he very selfishly demands everyone respect him every time they see him by shutting up and giving him a polite whistle. Of course, naturally, everyone is like, uh, no? Of course we're not going to do that. You can toot at him if you like, but I'm not going to. Gordon gets his comeuppance later on when he gets so distracted by Emily not whistling at him that he runs a red signal and crashes. A pretty spectacular crash, for the record. Although I have to wonder how many casualties there were from this. He was pulling the express after all. Coincidentally, we don't see Sir Topham Hatt at all in this episode. He must have been busy dealing with the hundreds of lawsuits against his railway, huh? You big girl, bitch! Bother. Gordon has to be taken out of service for repairs, but not before being teased by the other engines. We reach the 430 minute mark, and for all intents and purposes, the story could have ended here. An engine is unnecessarily selfish to others, crashes and or makes a fool of himself, and learns his lesson. It's a very Audrey-esque or classic-esque story formula. See Dirty Objects, Percy Takes the Plunge, Off the Rails, Thomas Comes to Breakfast, Better View for Gordon, the list is endless. The story could have ended here, and it would have sufficed. But that's the magic of Respect for Gordon. It doesn't end here, and it keeps going. Instead of padding out a simple story to seven minutes, Respect for Gordon uses that extra two and a half to make the story more interesting and flesh out the characters a bit more. So while Gordon's away being repaired, Henry and Emily take it in turns to haul the express. One night they all come together and agree that, you know, pulling a non-stop express every day is actually pretty tiring. Gordon's job isn't actually that easy. Maybe, just maybe, he does deserve that respect he desires. Maybe we were wrong to tease him. It's a classic run a mile in someone else's shoes story. Very similarly to Henry's hero, this episode goes out of its way to show that there isn't a really clear right or wrong side. The engines were just as wrong to make so much fun of Gordon as Gordon was to demand respect for them all. But at the same time, both sides are right in their own ways. It was ridiculous of Gordon to demand such a thing, and the engines were right to call him out on it. But at the same time, Gordon is a hard worker, and that shouldn't go unacknowledged. The episode ends with a nice, endearing scene of all the engines together, where they each apologize to each other, and they level the playing field. Gordon learns that respect is something that is earned, and the others learn that every hardworking member of their team deserves respect. This is a very rare hit-era episode that actually progresses the characters a bit. It's such a wonderful team-building story. While it is an excellent Gordon episode, I would also call this a really good Steam Team episode. Perhaps one of the best we've gotten. And all of this wouldn't have been possible if it weren't for the advantage of that longer runtime. So in conclusion, Respect for Gordon is a standout episode that I think is on par with the likes of the classic series. It's not the only hit episode that I think is worthy of praise either. It's Good to Be Gordon is also an awesome episode, as is Squeak, Rattle, and Roll, and also Gordon and the Engineer, and huh, you know, I'm sensing a pattern here. The hit era did a bad job overall of using the new format to its advantage, and it just paved way to even lazier storytelling in the years following. I don't defend this era as it truly did f*** over Thomas's reputation to the general public as just another brainless show for babies, but it still had its moments. 
I don't champion a season good at all if only like two or three of the 26 episodes are gems, but it does make those gems shine a little bit brighter than the rest. Truly, respect for Gordon is a diamond in the rough.